Hello friends, my name is Nizamuddin Ahmed Siddiqui and I am an assistant professor of law at West Bengal National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata. I will be take, taking this module on Article 21, an adoption of mini constitution. This module aims to fulfill the following learning objectives. Number one, to appreciate the role of judiciary for its impartial justice while interpreting Article 21. Number two, to understand the nuances and interpretation of Article 21 in a much better manner. And number three, to be able to appreciate the interpretation of Article 21 as done by the judiciary. With the above objectives in mind, friends, let us first understand the issues which we will try to learn in this unit. The first issue is right to life and personal liberty. Friends, right to life and personal liberty is the most valued and essential fundamental right about which other rights of the individual turn around and therefore the study assumes vast implication. It guarantees right to life and personal liberty of citizens and aliens and is enforceable in opposition to the state. The innovative interpretation of article 21 in Menika Gandhi's case has ushered a new epoch of spreading out the horizons of right to life and personal liberty. The wide dimension to this right now covers various aspects which the founding fathers of the constitution might or might not have visualized. The above stated revolution in the basic concept makes it imperative that the concept of right to life and personal liberty should be examined with a new reference to the development, meaning width and strength along with judicial rationalization, explanation for such laissez-faire interpretation and relation of article 21 with the provisions of article 32 and directive principles of state policy and of course the international human rights instruments. Further, the fortification of this right is blazing topic of the day. Therefore, an effort has been made in this module to scrutinize the present day principles adopted for defending the right to life and personal liberty of the individuals. Friends, right to life and personal liberty is one of the most important aspects in a constitutional democracy. In essence, in a liberal democracy. As we will be dealing extensively with Article 21 in this module, it is important for us to know what do we mean by right to life and personal liberty. Right to life is certainly the most elemental of all rights. All the other rights add worth to the life in issue and depend on the pre-existence of life itself for their function. There would have been no, fun no such fundamental rights worth to mention if Article 21 had not been interpreted in its innovative sense. Article 21 of the Constitution provides that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law. Life in Article 21 of the Constitution is not simply the physical act of breathing. It has a great extent wider denotation which includes right to live with self-esteem, right to livelihood, right to health, right to pollution free air etc. Right to life is fundamental to our severe survival lacking which we cannot live as a human being and includes all individual aspects of life which go to build a man's life significant, absolute and worth living. Liberty of the human being is one of the oldest concepts 
to be confined and defined by the national courts. As long as the English Magna Carta provided that no free man shall be taken or caged, but only by the rule of the territory. The smallest article of 18 terms has the utmost importance for those who esteem the morals of liberation. Friends, what can be further essential than liberty? In India, the notion of liberty has acknowledged a far more liberal interpretation. The Supreme Court of India has cast off the outlook that independence denote simply freedom from physical restraint and has detained that it encompasses those civil rights and civil liberties which have long been predicted as being necessary to the systematic pursuit of pleasure by free men. The embargo against its denial extensive of all those limits and facilities which the living be enjoyed. This stipulation evenly forbids the maiming of the body or the elimination of an arm or leg or the putting of an eye or the demolition of any other organ of the corpse in the course of which the soul communicates with the external world. The court observed to facilitate that the right to personal liberty in the Indian constitution is the right of an individual to be liberated from boundaries or encroachments on his personality, whether they are honestly imposed or brought in an ultimate manner. The Supreme Court has apprehended that yet lawful detention does not spell send off to all the fundamental rights. A prisoner retains all the rights enjoyed by a free national apart from those which are necessarily vanished as an event of imprisonment. To understand generally the composition of Article 21, we need to notice one of the most important facets of it, which includes the procedure established by law. Friends, the fr phrase procedure established by law means that a law is appropriately enacted by government or the concerned legitimate authority only if the authority had followed the right practice. In essence, the practice which the law recognizes. To understand the concept of procedure established by law, we shall now refer to Dicey's concept of rule of law. In his book, Law and the Constitution, published in 1885, Dicey certifies three meanings to the doctrine of the rule of law. The first element as he identifies is supremacy of law. The term supremacy of law implies governance and the primacy of law. It is contrasted to the pressure of arbitrary control and broad flexible control. In Dicey's words, wherever there is diplomacy, there is scope for uncertainty and that in a democracy, no less than in a dominant discretionary power on the part of the government should mean uncertainty for authorized liberty on part of its subjects. Friends, the second element is equality before law. It means that the law administered should be supposed to be the common rule of law applicable to all the citizens uniformly irrespective of caste, creed or religion. We can also add gender to it. This principle has also been incorporated in the Indian constitution in the form of article 14. The extension of the meaning can also be seen in article 15 of the constitution. Dicey originally was of the scrutiny that any infringement on the power of the courts and any limitations on the subjects unrestricted access to them are bound 
to make him vulnerable to his rights. Friends, the third element is predominance of legal spirit. We need to understand that the constitution is not the starting place, but the end result of the rights of the individuals. Here, Dicey emphasizes on the function of the courts. Without a power to defend and put into effect the rights conferred upon the citizen, the enclosure in a document, etc., is of minute importance. Mere inclusion is not trustworthy and its provisions might be abridged, trodden or disregarded. Over the years, a prominent success of the Supreme Court has been not only to review Article 21 from the unconsciousness into which it was relegated by the court's own verdict as early as 1950 in A.K. Gopalan versus State of Madras. But to give it such a liberal and moderate interpretation as to a high platform. In Gopalan case, the court interpreted Article 21 very accurately and opined that the phrase procedure established by law merely intended any process which was laid down in the law by the proficient legislature to deny a person of his life or personal liberty and to facilitate that it was not permitted to interpret in the article any such impression as natural justice or due process of law or rationality. Friends, let us now discuss some of the judicial pronouncements after A.K. Gopalan which have given positive dimensions to Article 21. In Menaka Gandhi versus Union of India, the Supreme Court gave an innovative facet to Article 21. It established that the right to live is not merely confined to physical existence but includes within its sphere the right to live with human dignity. In another case, the People's Union for Democratic Rights versus Union of India decided in 1982, also known as Asia Workers case, the Supreme Court established that non-payment of minimum wages to the workers engaged in assorted Asia projects in Delhi was in contradiction to their right to live with essential human dignity and the court found it violative of Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Another case which we can look into is the case which deals with the right to livelihood in Olga Telles versus Bombay Municipal Corporation decided in 1986 also known as the pavement dwellers case. A five judge bench of the Supreme Court in its conclusion established that the word life in article 21 includes the right to livelihood also. Court said it does not denote merely that life cannot be extinguished or taken away as for example by the obligation and implementation of the death sentence. But according to procedure recognized by law that is one aspect of the right to life. A uniformly significant facet of the right to life is the right to livelihood since no person can live without the means of livelihood. The court additionally established that if the right to livelihood is not related as a part and parcel of the legitimate right to life, the easiest means of depriving an individual of his right to life would be to divest him of his means of livelihood to the position of abrogation. The state might not through affirmative act be bound to supply adequate means of livelihood or work for the citizens. But whoever is deprived of his right to livelihood with the exception according to just and fair procedure recognized by law can challenge the denial as offending the right to life conferred 
by article 21 of the Indian constitution. In the case of Vishaka versus state of Rajasthan decided in 1997, Supreme Court made it apparently clear that sexual harassment of working women amounts to a breach of right to gender equality and right to life and personal liberty. And therefore, as a consequence, it also amounts to the abuse of the right to practice any profession, occupation or trade. Supreme Court laid down definite guidelines to be observed at all workplaces or, the, or other institutions till legislation is enacted for the intention. It held that these guidelines should be treated as the regulation confirmed by it under Article 141 of the Constitution. Friends, several other rights have also been interpreted by the Supreme Court of India into Article 21, which include right to health, right to electricity, right to free legal aid, right to environment, etc. The 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act of 1976, also known as the Mini Constitution of India, brought a number of changes in the Constitution. The Act inter alia gave preponderance to the directive principles of state policy over fundamental rights and also established the supremacy of parliament and curtailed the powers of the judiciary. The act was first of its kind. It is one of the most comprehensive acts which touched almost all the sensitive areas of the constitution and it was meant to enhance enormously the strength of the government. Friends, the dominant thrust of the amendment was to reduce the role of the courts, particularly that of the high courts. It also sought to strengthen parliament in many ways, which in effect added to the power of the central government. It drew enormous criticism, particularly since it was pushed through during the times of emergency. Since the 42nd constitutional amendment gave primacy to all directive principles over fundamental rights, which are contained in article 14, 19 and 21, if it affected article 21 in various problematic ways. Therefore, 44th amendment to the constitution was passed by the legislature as a sequel to nullify some of the provisions, particularly clauses 4 and 5 of article 359, which was made under article under 42nd amendment stating that article 21 cannot be suspended even during emergency and it can safely be interpreted as above all fundamental rights as it forms one of the basic features of the constitution. To conclude the module, friends, it is submitted that article 21 is one of the key articles in part 3 of the constitution of India dealing with fundamental rights. Fundamental rights listed in part 3 are enforceable in opposition to a state as defined by article 12 of the constitution, in which includes the government and parliament of India, the government and the legislature of each of the states and all local or other authorities within the territory of India or under the power of the government of India. As laid down by article 13, laws contradictory to or in derogation of the fundamental rights to the extent of such variation of or derogation would also be treated to be annulled. With these things in background, we can understand the nature and extent of right to life and personal liberty 
under Article 21. Friends, right to life guaranteed in any enlightened civilization implies right to food, water, decent environment, education, medical care and shelter. The word life as employed by Article 21 in simplest terms does not only include the concept of fear, mere physical existence, but also includes the better principles of life with the right to work and right to live as we have already discussed. This right is a fundamental right guaranteed to all persons residing in India, citizens and non-citizens alike. The state is also enjoined not to compose any law which takes away or abridges the rights conferred by part 3 of the constitution and any law made in breach of article 13 shall to the extent of the infringement to be treated as void. So far as Article 21 is concerned, it lays down that no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty with the exception to the procedure established by law. And friends, we have already discussed the meaning of procedure established by law. With this, we come to the end of this lecture. Friends, I thank you for your patience and hearing.